Because I don't belong down here I don't belong down here I'm a pilgrim passing through Jesus has prepared the home I'm going to And someday by His grace I shall look upon His face I don't belong down here You may have your house and your land you may build your hopes upon the sand I'd rather know that Jesus holds my hand it's because I don't belong down here I don't belong down here I'm a pilgrim passing through Jesus has prepared the home I'm going to and someday by his grace I shall look upon his face I don't belong down here don't pity me or think that I'm sad I never miss the things that I once had my heart is full and I'm so glad you know why don't you it's because I don't belong down here well I don't belong down here I'm a pilgrim passing through Jesus has prepared the home I'm going to and someday by his grace I shall look upon his face I don't belong down here well I've moved all around and, and I've traveled quite a bit the postman has been quite distressed Cause he had to rearrange all the letters that I get And send them to my new address I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move right, through the end, right through the end To the land of the happy and blessed And the enemy cannot Find me up there, I won't leave any forwarding address. My life has been plagued with sickness and with pain, and I failed when I tried to progress. But where I'm going, don't you know, pain and sickness cannot go. They can't find my new address. I'm going to say I'm gonna burn right, through the air, right through the air to, to the land of the happy and blessed And the enemy cannot find me up there I won't leave any forwarding address So brother or sister hold on don't, don't you worry don't you fret soon we'll step on that beautiful shore where the devil with his powers and his troubles cannot get his hands on our address anymore Sing it. we're gonna move of the happy and blessed and the enemy cannot find us up there we won't leave any forwarding address won't it be wonderful there having no burdens to bear joyously singing 
with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. District Council. And that's the one that Brother Betzer said, do you have tapes? And we said, well, yes, sir, we have tapes. Well, are they out there on the table where they can be bought? We said, no, sir, they can't be bought. And he came over and looked at us and he said, you don't sell your tapes. We said, no, we give them away. Uh-uh. Yes, we do. And many times in our revivals, as we sing the different songs, we tell them if they bring a certain number to the revival, they'll get tape number one. If they bring that many more, they get tape number two. And if they bring more, they get tape number three. And I think that's about all we carried with us. And uh, because, you know, if you sometimes invite a person to church, they'll say, oh, well, maybe. But if they think they can get, they can help you to win something, they'll come. And we found that that worked just real well. And I'd much rather give them away than to sell them because our tapes are not made in a studio. They're made right in church, right in the services. And uh, so, but that just blew him away when he found out that we didn't sell any tapes. But the Lord has, and he said, well, you'll never make it. I said, we've made it for 60 years. What are we worried about? I think it's the key of F that I won. <laughs> oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Praise the Lord. You know, in any marriage or any situation of love, love is a two-way street. It's awful to love somebody and they don't love you. I, I say it's awful it, it's disappointing, but you can love somebody whether they love you or not. And uh, but we love Jesus because He first loved us. He loved us when there was nothing about us to love. Now listen to this, and He keeps on loving us, even though many times there's very little about us to love. He loves us anyhow. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. I wrote down just a while ago two things that uh, I learned at the District Council from Denny Duran. And uh, one was what to do about adverse criticism. When people criticize you, and uh, this, this is what he said. He said, someone came to him and said, Brother Duran, there's a number of things that you do that I don't like. And he said, you know, I don't either. And then they said, you know, come think of it, you're not much of a preacher. And he said, you know, I agree with you. I really don't know why the Lord ever called me to preach. 
And then they said, Brother Duran, you don't make a very good pastor. And he said, that's right. He said, but, <laughs> but God called me and put me here, and here I am. So what am I going to do? <laughs> and he said, those people went away scratching their head and said, we can't even insult him. And, uh, what are you going to do with a person that agrees with you all the time? And he said, that's the best thing to do about adverse criticism. Agree with them. And uh, they don't know what else to say <laughs> or what else to do. The other thing, and I think you'll enjoy this. He was getting ready to preach, and he said, I'm going to try to be short, but I have to remind you, it hasn't worked before. So, I'm going to try to be short. It has, it has worked a time or two. Okay. Open your Bible, please, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 37. I'm going to read verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23. Then I'm going over to Isaiah, chapter 30, and verse, that must be the wrong chapter. Mm hmm. Hmm? Do, 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 do. No. Oh, yes, it is 20. It is 21. All right, thank you. In thine ears, did I read the other one? <laughs> I'm having a senior moment here. Psalm chapter 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Now, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. The verse in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, which says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, can be paraphrased or reversed to say that a good man walks in the steps that are ordered by the Lord. And that does no damage to the Scripture. A good man walks in the steps that are ordered by the Lord. And Isaiah says that you will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, not a way or one of the ways if you care to walk in it. Uh -uh. This is the way, walk ye in it. Father, I pray tonight that you would make your word real to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to learn what you want us to know. And help us to do what you want us to do. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I have made it a habit that every day when I go to read my Bible in my daily devotions, 
Most of the time I have already prayed and, and talked with the Lord. And then when I go to my desk and I open my Bible, before I begin to read, I say, Lord, help me to learn something from your word. And then when I learn it, help me to do something about it. Help me not to ignore it or try to override it or to change it. But help me to do what the Word tells me to do. Now the psalmist said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It is my opinion that this does not mean that every step that we take is the step the Lord wanted us to take. But they are steps that He wants us to, stay, to take. And He has ordered us to walk in those steps. I don't know if there's any other... Well, I guess there are some servicemen here, aren't you? You served in, in, in the military. When the sergeant, the drill sergeant, or the first sergeant said, forward march, he didn't say, if you care to. He didn't say, if it suits you. He didn't say, if you don't mind, please go forward. Now, here, it's kind of a comical thing, except that the sergeant didn't, doesn't usually think it's comical. But when you're marching forward and he says, to the left flank, march, that means you go to the left. But every once in a while, there's somebody in that marching group who mistakes the right from the left. And you'll be marching down and he'll say to the left flank, do it! And we're going this way except for one fella. And he's going that way. Now since the sergeant ordered us to go this way, and he went that way, I have never heard the sergeant go up to him and say, <laughs> well, I know everybody doesn't agree with me. <laughs> and and uh, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. And so if you'd rather go to the right, that's all right with me. Because this is America and it's a free country and you can do whatever you want. I've never heard a sergeant say that. Now, it's a little different with us and the Lord. He orders us. He orders our steps. But He never transgresses our free will. He never says, you've got to do it. He will tell you what the consequences are if you don't. But He will not force you to walk in the steps that He has ordered. The choice, where's Brother Eric? The choice is up to you. He's been telling the young people that for several weeks now. It's your choice. But He reminds you what will happen if you go to the right instead of the left when he says go left, he reminds you that you will end up in sorrow, in grief, and perhaps in destruction, and may even lose your soul if you insist on going your way. Now the Lord orders our steps because he knows what's best for us. You ask for this, brother. 
in, sp <laughs> in spite of what you said Sunday morning uh, <laughs> about us being out of the will of the Lord, uh, you're wrong. I know you were teasing, but but uh, I got, I don't know who I was talking to not long ago, and I said, uh, the, the thing I wondered about was whether there were people here that took you seriously about that and, and thought we're out of the will of God. But, you see, we don't go. And I, I say this kindly, I don't mean any sarcasm by it. But we don't go by what Brother Fairchild says is the will of God. Or what Phyllis does, and she's been begging us too. I'm talking about Phyllis Wright. She's been bugging me about, are you sure, you know, the, the Lord, you know. And we don't go by what Phyllis Wright says or where she says to go. But our duty as a child of God is to go where he says, where he orders. And any other way is a misstep. Any other way is a catastrophe. Every other way can spell disaster. If you walk in your own way, or if you are persuaded by other people about which way to go. Now, I think every one of us realizes that our difficulty is not in hearing what God has to say. Our difficulty is doing what we hear Him tell us to do. That's our problem. We get uptight. We get stubborn. And believe me, there are more people than the Pennsylvania Dutch who can get stubborn. Right? Right? There are Texans, there are Missourians, there are uh, Yankees and rebels and what else have you. And it isn't a matter of where you come from or what your, what your heritage is and so forth. It's a matter of your own will and my own will. He orders the way I ought to walk. I make the choice to either do what he said, obey him, or say, I ain't gonna do it. Now, we don't always appreciate the road the Lord tells us to walk. We think we know better. Shake your head, I'll hear it rattle. Uh, we think we know better than the Lord sometimes. And we say, now surely, Lord, you didn't mean that. And then we offer him all the reasons we believe he made a mistake. We tell him why that would be the wrong thing for us to do. Either it's a rough way, the way you said, Lord. I'd rather go this way because it's smoother. If I go that way, Lord, people are going to criticize me. If I go this way, they'll like me better. Are you listening? And so we argue with the Lord and say, Well, Lord, there are so many people going this way, why would you ask me to go the other way? I'll stick out like a sore thumb and people won't like me, people will criticize me, people will find fault with me. Remember, agree with them. People will find fault with me and I'll almost be an outcast. But the Lord says, all right. If that's what you want to do, go that way. Go with the crowd. Do what the crowd says. Do what your so-called friends are urging you to do. Go ahead and do it. 
But when you get in difficulties, and some people don't believe this, but you need to read some more of your Bible if you don't. And this is what I'm about to say. If you don't, if you go your way, when you get in a pinch, when you get to the place where you recognize your mistake, don't be surprised if the first time you cry out and say, Lord, help me, that you don't get your help right away. Hello. God is gracious, and the Lord is kind, and the Lord is merciful. But the Lord is also a righteous judge. He's a righteous Lord. And you'll find over and over in the Word of God, says, if you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments, I will bless you. I will pour out my blessings upon you. I will, I will take care of your enemies. Uh, I, I, will, I will give you safety and so forth. But if you don't, I will turn. Read it. I will turn my back from you. And I will expose you to your enemies. And you will be defeated and you'll go down in defeat. Not because that's my will for you, but that was your will for you. You did it without my permission and you did it without my blessing. And so there you are. Oh, I'm glad, I'm so glad that when we really repent, and when we really tell the Lord we're sorry and that we will walk in His ways, I'm glad He forgives. I'm glad that, that He helps us and, and doesn't hold it against us. How many are reading the Old Testament right now? Are you reading in the Old Testament? If you're reading the Bible through, you ought to still be in the Old Testament, right? Because that's, that's the lesson. But anyhow, read the Old Testament and you'll find that as and many times as Israel strayed and went, went, went their own way and then said, we're going we're gonna to destroy the idols, we're going to tear down uh, the, the, the altars and so forth, we're going to serve the Lord, the Lord already knew that it wouldn't last long. He forgave them. He took them back. He fought their battles. He overcame their enemies. But he know as sure as the sun comes up in the morning, something or somebody were, was going to influence those Israelites somehow or other, and they were going to turn right away again and go in their own way. Now how, what kind of steps does the Lord want us to take? Listen. Walk soberly and righteous in this present world. He wants us to walk in the paths of righteousness. If you're walking in any other direction, you're going in a direction opposite to and opposite from what the Lord wants for our lives. That's why when I, in my ministry, I started out first of all as an evangelist. People would say to me over and over again, uh, are you going to settle out? Are you going to take a pastorate? And I would always say, no, I wasn't called to be a pastor. I was called to be an evangelist. And uh, that went on for a good number of years. In fact, uh, till after we were married and, and uh, we were even evangelizing after we got married. And they would ask me the same thing. Aren't you going to pastor? And I'd say, no, I'm not a pastor. I'm an evangelist. But one time at a district council in Austin, well, it happened to be in Austin, wasn't it? Austin, Texas. One of the individuals from one of the churches we'd held a revival in, came that said, she said, I was sent here by the church as a delegate 
to ask you if you and your wife would come and be our pastors. And I said, no, no way. I am not a pastor. I am an evangelist. That's what God called me to be. Now, it so happens that prior to that, over and over through my mind went the thought of pastoring. I just passed it off as, you know, one of my desires, like you do. Oh, well, maybe I ought to pastor. But when I said no to that delegate that I would not, I would not even come, I would not consider it, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me. I had parked my car on one of the side streets in Austin, Texas, when I went into that district council. When I came out, I stood on the steps of that auditorium and I absolutely, positively did not know where I had parked my car. My wife would say, was it on this street? I, I don't know. Was it a side street, well, one that goes parallel, to, parallel with this or, or crosses it? I don't know. My mind was absolutely blank. And God said to me, as soon as you go the way I just ordered you, you'll be all right. So I went to that delegate and I said, the Lord has whipped me and told me that I made the choice instead of letting him make the choice. So you go back and you tell that congregation that I'll come if it's where the Lord wants me to go. The exact minute Brother Clem, that I told her that, I immediately knew where my car was. Immediately. Didn't have to wait, didn't have to hesitate. Just like that, like, like Ford has a better idea, you know. Uh, the light came on, and I knew why I had parked my car. Now, you see, I loved the evangelist work, work and I still do. And I thought that if God told me once I should be an evangelist, he meant that was, that was for life. But you see, I'm not God, are you? We're not God. He's God. And he has a right to change things if he wants to. Our place is to follow wherever he leads. And the marvelous thing about it is, he always leads us in the right way. Always, always, always leads us in the right way. You're never wrong when you decide to follow Jesus. When you decide to do His will. Now my name wouldn't be Kennedy. And you would not recognize me. And you would go home and wonder what happened to me if I didn't get into this part of it. And that is, there's always someone to question the Lord's will for you. There's always someone to try to lure you away from walking in the ordered steps of the Lord. That's too old-fashioned. That's not popular. You can't get along with people that way. I, I don't know, a bunch of you are not preachers, but I, I'm sure that Brother Martin has got these uh, deals from different publications and so forth. How to be a success as a minister. How, how to have friends and be friendly, and how to get along with people. And uh, 
over and over in those courses and in those schools, their answer is learn to give and take. Learn to compromise. Learn to give in. Now the Bible says there is a time and a season for everything. And there are times when we compromise simply because we are insisting on our own way and our own steps and our own will. And we must compromise that to God. But when God, through His revealed Word, tells us how He wants us to walk and where and when He wants us to walk and where to go, there is no debate. There's no room for argument. There's no room for discussion. Someone, <laughs> someone has said the, the easiest way to get out of the will of God is to call a committee and discuss it and see which, which way you're supposed to go. And when you do, you have 411 different ideas. That's a good way to get in trouble in church, too. We're going to paint the inside. Now we're going to hand out slips of paper, and you tell us what color you want us to paint it. Hello. Some want it red, some want it pink, some want it green. Some even wanted it sky blue pink. My dad always wanted everything mock orange. I, I, to this day, I don't know what mock orange is. But every time you'd ask him uh, what, what color he wanted something, he'd say, make it mock orange. Never would explain it, never would tell us what he meant. He'd just say, make it mock orange. And uh, that was a big help, you know. But there, there's, a, there's a time, folks, what I'm trying to, there's a time for advice, there's a time for discussion, but there comes a time in my life and your life when we must close out, shut out every voice that would, that would come to us and say, I will hear no voice but the voice of God. And when I hear that voice of God, I have made up my mind, I'm going to do it. I'm going to obey it. What was it he said? I'll try to be short, but it hasn't happened before. This is going to be short. How many believe that? Well, Brother Thompson didn't even vote for me. My closing remarks as I wind this up. A lot of us in this service tonight have come into Pentecost years ago. We've been in this thing. We have seen fads come and fads go. We have seen a lot of things change. Some, come on, let's be honest, some for the better. Some for the worse. But as we get, you, you think the world's getting bad. It is, but so is the church. You heard on the news, I suppose, this argument about prayer at ball games and, and so forth, and that, that the Supreme Court has said that even a student, it's, it's illegal for them to pray at a graduation unless they pray silently. Oh, doesn't that grab you? I'm going to stand up here now and I'm going to lead you in prayer.
Amen. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. The church of Jesus Christ and the Christians, I, I, not just other, a lot of other places, but right here in our own country, it's going to get worse. They're going to try to silence us. Not only will we be considered the minority, but we will be called the silent minority. But you know, the scripture we use a lot of times to encourage ourselves when the crowd isn't too big, you know what that is? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. But listen, as long as there are two or three in our country who will stand on their feet and be brave for the Lord, they're not going to, the, the, the others are not going to win. That's all there is to it. God's true church is going to go on and it's going to prosper and it's going to be victorious. I had a preacher who came to our church in McAllen he came from, an, I think, out West Texas district. He called me when he moved into McAllen. And he asked me some questions about what I believed and so forth. And then he told me, he said, Brother Kennedy, I don't know how you can stay in the Assemblies of God. He said, before I move from the West Texas district, I turned in my credentials. And I said, you want to tell me why? And he said, because the Assemblies of God is getting too worldly. And they just keep going that way. I said, brother, I agree with you. There you go, see. I agree with you about what's happening. But what I don't agree with is, if you get out, and I get out, and the others, though they be a handful, and the others get out, who still believe in the holiness of God, and the old-fashioned gospel that was preached to us for years, if we get out, who's going to be a defender for the truth? I said, the difference in you and me is you may not like what is happening, but you can't do a thing about it if you've turned in your credentials. Hello. I do not like some of the things that are going on. But I can stand to my feet, walk up to the microphone in a district council, and say, Brother Chairman, I vote against that. <laughs> I can be heard. Hallelujah. I preach, when we go up north, I preach a lot for independent churches and independent camp meetings. A lot of them. And they say to me, you know what's happening, don't you? I say, yes, sir. Why do you stay in? I say, I stay in because I want God to at least have somebody he can depend upon who will stand up and say, that's wrong, it's not scriptural, and I'm against it. You can do it if you want to, but you don't do it with my vote. Deserting the ship, going overboard, will never help the boat. But if you stay in the boat, you might be able to paddle a little bit and get the boat to shore. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, the final thing is this. As I walk in the steps of the Lord, let me show you how I walk. Brother Daniel... Would you take this microphone a minute?
chair, and I walk from the living room into the kitchen or somewhere else. And I'll say, straighten up. Straighten up. Pull your shoulders back. Well, when I do that, I exaggerate. Just to show them I can. And I just, I don't just throw my shoulders back a little bit. Was I? Oh, I have a feeling that uh, if, you, if we walk as God's people and say, I'm going to walk in the ordered steps of the Lord and we keep our head high, we're not going to miss it. Hello. We're not going to miss it. But when he comes with a shout, with a trump of God and the voice of the archangel, We'll say, Lord, I've been looking for you all the time. And I'm so glad you came. <laughs> when they look for us and can find us. When they look for us and can find us. When they look for us and can find us. We'll be caught up in the rapture with our Lord. Stand to your feet. Oh, we'll be caught up in the rapture. We'll be caught up in the rapture. We'll be caught up in the rapture with our Lord.